We must publish more as people. It's very, very important that we do that. We don't have enough information out here. That's very important, and we need solid information out here. We as a people must read also beyond our African-centered books. Some people get some people are getting caught up in reading black-only books, or books written only by black authors. I warn you, that can limit your perception. We're writing as much as we can. Other people are writing as much as we can, as they can. But frankly speaking, there are the number of African-centered books written by African authors is still very narrow in terms of the kind of knowledge and information we need to have as a people. And consequently then, we must integrate a lot of other knowledge from a lot of other sources into an African-centered program. I am concerned with Africanizing information. You can get information from anywhere and any place and anybody. It's not the source of the information that is of major importance. It is the question that you have in mind and the intentionality that you have in mind when you uh, contact that information that is of importance. When you come with certain African-centered questions and certain African-centered intentions, you can subvert the intentions of other people. And even though they may have written lies, they may have written a book to falsify your image. With an African-centered question in your mind, and with an African-centered intentionality in your mind, you can still gain useful information from that. And you can turn then their intentions into something that works for you. So you just can't say, well, because it's written by a white man, I'm not gonna read it. Mm -mm. Or because, oh, that's lying and they're intended to do, no, the fact that you know it's a lie is, is information. <laughs> now, why is it a lie? What is the end point of the lie? What is trying to be accomplished there? What is the technique of the lie? How is this hooked into propaganda? In what way is, is this group trying to transform my consciousness? What techniques and methods can I get from this to use against my enemies? What are their methods and techniques of propaganda that I can use to advance the propaganda for African people? Because see, our, our propaganda is not necessarily lies either, you know. And propaganda is not necessarily a negative term. Propaganda comes from the basic word to propagate, to move information, to communicate information, to persuade. And the methods of moving information and communicating information and of persuading people is not a science of Europeans only, not by any stretch of the imagination. As a matter of fact, when you study the oral tradition, you'll find that that tradition is very much grounded in persuasion. We're talking about it's very much black about culture in America. We even talk about African culture in Africa. You must recognize and you must ask yourself what is the political economy of the oppressed black culture? In other words, remember our personality is, is a political economic structure. Particularly, and, and therefore, if we let another people shape our personalities and shape our cultures, those cultures and personalities will operate to maintain their system and their dominance. So while we may praise black culture in America and African culture in Africa and in the diaspora, we must also ask ourselves the question, what is the political economy of these cultures and what are the various personal and social identities these cultures produce and to whose end? We must recognize that the basic identities of the oppressed are largely socially manufactured by their oppressors' culture and related social practices. And to a good extent, what we call black culture in America today, even though it has deep African roots 
and African history is still buried in it, is still related to and incarnations of Europe-centric culture. And we've got to recognize this and deal with it. We just can't praise it un, uh, unabashedly. We must look at the degree to which what we see as black culture today is an instrumentality of European culture. And I mean this in the real sense. And, and an instrumentality of European power to the point of where African men and women actually fight in combat for European interests. You see, because of the way we have what? Defined ourselves as men and women. And even as the way we have sought to try to define black culture in America. You see. And now we have our own people on the soil of Africa. And now we have a, a, a man, Colin Powell, plotting out and designing the program for Europeans to maintain dominance over African people. Yes, because we have defined our Africanness in a peculiar way. Black male identity is hooked into this thing as well, which is one reason why we have a lot of problems today. The reclamation of our male youth and our female youth requires an appropriate thorough, pragmatic, critical analysis, cultural analysis of the deculturation and reculturation of African Americans and their social products as represented by black male identities and female identities. It's not enough for us to show how we were decultured during the diaspora and slavery and so forth. It's very important for us to understand how we were recultured and reorganized. We are not uncultured simply because we don't have African culture. You see, we have been what? Recultured and rearranged and restructured. You see, and we must understand in depth how that restructuring took place and how it expresses itself in us and in the way we relate to each other. You see, because it is this reculturation ultimately that we must do what? We must reconstruct. We must tear down. We must remove outside of ourselves. So it's not enough to say what we have been missing as a people, or how our African culture what taken away from our people, but we must come to understand how we have been newly created by another people. And how does that new creation under their power represent itself in our personalities and in our social lives, in the way we think, in the way we behave, in the way we perceive the world, in the way we relate to each other and the whole bit. Because it's, it's with that understanding that you design an educational curriculum for African children. You see, you're not just going to teach them history and culture. You're not just going to raise their self-esteem. That's, that's just the beginning. <laughs> you got to say, uh-uh. Because you can feel good and still be Eurocentric, you know. And you can still, you can have high self-esteem and still be Eurocentric as well, you know. <laughs> yeah. So there's a whole other process going on. This is why the multicultural curriculum <clears throat> is not sufficient. It is not just a matter of teaching us to respect other people's culture and to look at and a, a, accept cultural differences. African people are in a process of reculturation and a process of reconstruction as a people, you see. It's not a situation where the Chinese say, well, you didn't teach my culture uh, in the schools, even though my culture has maintained continuity for the last 10,000 years, you see. And even though I still speak Chinese, I still eat Chinese food, I still buy from Chinese restaurants, I still do almost everything, what, Chinese. Now I just want you to respect my culture. But that's, that's not where the African people what, are. You have a cultural discontinuity. You have cultural what? Trauma. Yes, you have a whole reconstruction to undergo. And therefore, a little Pollyanna multicultural education cannot meet the needs of African people. Even African people on the continent are in a, in a process of what? Reconstruction and redesign. You understand? So no light course in, in, in dancing with other people and, 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 and that kind of stuff is going to uh, uh, do what we need. Not at all. The reclamation of our, it requires then, the reclamation of our male youth requires an appropriate, thorough, pragmatic cultural analysis of the deculturation and reculturation of African Americans and their social products as represented by black male and female identities. 
how these identities, whether considered pro-social or anti-social, I've told you on other occasion that a great enemy to the black community is the good black person. <laughs> yes, is the law-abiding black person. Yes. Oh, yes. In fact, we're in this mess because of law-abiding, good black people. Yes. What did I tell you? These youngsters that you want to damn in so many ways did not create the world that they live in. They were born and they are reared in the world that we created, that adults, what, created. They are not making the ghettos. They are not making the joblessness and unemployment. They are not making the poor schools and poor and miseducation. They are not doing and creating these things. It is who? Us. Us. Black adults. African adults. And to a great extent, it is us law-abiding and good ones. It is, it is us ones who don't see color. Yeah, it is us who want to be loved by Koreans, want to be loved by Arabs, want to have racial harmony, want peace between the sisters and the brothers all over this land. Do you have your mind? <laughs> and yet you can't have peace in your own house. You can't have peace in your own neighborhood. You can't have peace in your own street. And it's just so Negroish. Really? He's going to solve the problem of all the people before he can solve his own. Yeah. He's going to have the great mosaic and he can't even get his own piece together. <laughs> but this is the role the world has set for us so everybody can sucker us, you see. Yeah, that's what all it's about. And what, what, what people in the world are going to have any confidence in your capacity to work for all men when you haven't demonstrated your capacity to do what? Work for yourself. I, I'm qualified to solve all men's problems. Solve your own problem, man. You haven't solved your problem yet. In fact, we don't need you to solve our problem. We're doing quite well. We're rich. We're powerful. We're in control. We got great armies. And you want to solve our problem? Yeah. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. But, you know, again, what did I tell you? In order for us to be in the condition we are in, we have to be what? Backwards. We have to com be completely returned around. And we have to go in the very opposite of the way we should go as people. We have to forget our first impulse and change this thing around a bit, you see. We must understand here. And it is the pro-social ones. They feel good. I can spend my money where I want to. But why do you only want to spend it with other people then? What is it? I live wherever I want to. Then why do you want to live with only other people then? What is it? And watch the Negro, as I've said before. Yeah. I'm free to, to buy where I want to, but he never sells free enough to buy from himself. I'm free to live where I want to, and he thinks that means he has to live in a white neighborhood. You see? I'm free to do this and free to do that. And each, and each expression of his freedom requires that he gives up to someone else. Right. The white man doesn't want to live in your neighborhood, but yet he doesn't feel like this and then what? An infringement on his freedom. He doesn't buy from you. He doesn't feel that that's an infringement on his freedom. He doesn't live with you. He doesn't feel that's an infringement on his freedom. He doesn't go to school with you. He doesn't feel like that's an infringement on his freedom. You see? The Korean the same way. In fact, the, the, they feel free as the, the further they can get away. You see? But only the Negro, in trying to express his freedom, feels compelled to impose himself and his money and his wealth and his talents and everything else on outsiders and other people. Yes, backwards. Turn around. And to do it for himself, he feels bad. He feels guilty. He suffers from a guilty conscience. He feels irreligious. But it has to be that way if we are to be what? Suckered and robbed as a people. Yeah. And this is the name of the game. There shall be no racial harmony 
for the next 20 or 30 years, ladies and gentlemen. You got to get used to the idea. You got to get used to the idea, if you're going to win your freedom, that you're going to be disliked by a lot of people and a lot of ethnic groups. Yeah, you got to get used to living with great tension mm -hmm. if you're going to reclaim yourself and reclaim your life. If you're trying to maintain peace and harmony with every other ethnic group, they're going to put conditions on it. You can maintain harmony if you let me uh, buy and uh, sell to all your kids and you never own anything. You can maintain harmony as long as you don't disturb my economic domination. It's just like this anti-Semitism stuff that's got LIB jammed up. Oh, yeah. People, you know, one, at one point it's, a, it's not a race, it's a religion. At another point it's a race. You know, what, what's going on here? The thing that you have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a political strategy and an economic what? Strategy. An instrument of what? Control. A means by which one can control the behavior of others. You can call it religion, ethnicity, anything you want to, but its ultimate reality is that it is used to do what? Control the behavior and perceptions of other people in the interest of the people who belong to that thing. That's all it is. And the first question you ask, and so the, the thing goes out, you're anti-Semitic. Now, it doesn't matter what you said, whether you told the truth or not the truth, or this or that, it has nothing to do with that. Not at all. It has to do, now the next question you're gonna ask is, oh, how can I not be anti-Semitic? Don't say this, don't say that, don't do this, don't do that, and then we won't call you what? Anti-Semitic. <laughs> and so you, when you're striving to be what? Not anti-Semitic, you then what? Fall under the control of another people. Regardless as to whether they are right or wrong, or regardless of how unfair they are, as soon as you meet the requirements of not being called anti-Semitic, you're under control. And yet, here's a people that's less than 3% of the American population, less than one-tenth of 1% one of the world's population, who through the use of that term and through the throwing of that accusation can manipulate whole political and economic and social systems. And then they're the first one to tell you that you shouldn't talk in terms of race. And you should not use what? Your ethnic identity as a base of what? Power. And you should not use your ethnic identity as the base for political and economic strategies, you see, and as a means of what? Controlling other people's behavior and so forth, you see. Ethnicity is much deeper than the demarcation of ethnic characteristics, man. You see, and cultural characteristics, you see, are part of the totality of a people's power. And we have to understand that. And when we are training our youngsters, we have to understand that. We have to get these young men to understand, and when we are training them for manhood and the young women for womanhood and so forth, it requires that we perceive white supremacy as the major social and political and economic spiritual problem to be resolved by African people, and that we ask ourselves the question, what kinds of men and women must we produce in order to overthrow white supremacy? And overthrow white supremacy must be our goal. If you're not about overthrowing white supremacy, you're not about African-centeredness. Mm -mm. And the other thing is, if you're not about nation building, you're not about African-centeredness either. Anyone here is talking about African-centeredness and so forth is not talking about nation building and not talking about the building of a pan-African economic and political system is really, to my mind, not talking about African-centeredness. No, sir. Because the education of our children and what that education means, and what it should contain, and the educational experiences they should undergo, must be, be defined within a framework of overall purpose and goals for our people. Where are we going? What is our major problem in the world? One of our major problems in the world is white supremacy. This is not the problem of white children, you see. And it, an appropriate education of African children, then, requires that they be trained to do what? Solve that problem. And an education that does not include 
how to overthrow white supremacy among black people and how to destroy white power over black people is not African-centered. Mm -mm. I don't care how much culture you teach, how much history you teach, it's not about that. It's not about that. An education that is not about building a black nation and a nation within a nation and an African system of people cannot be an African-centered education. When you study economics and science and all of these other things, they must be studied within the frame of where you're going as a people and as a whole, you see? And their organization must be structured in terms of overall goals, national and international goals. When the United States has been challenged, white folk in the United States were challenged by the Japanese, they looked at what? Their educational system and they are trying to transform their educational system and the, the educational experiences of their youngsters so that they can create in them the motivations and attitudes and relations that will make them possible to defend themselves against the growth of Asian power in the world. They're not just teaching them A, B, C, one, two, three, or how to add accounts. All of this has to be integrated under a national goal. You see, we are doing business not only just because we want to go to work and come home and buy beer and look at football, <laughs> but because doing business in this way and relating to each other this way and doing accounting in this way and so forth and so forth allows us as a nation to protect our interests, to maintain our style of life, to maintain our freedom and independence. Even though you as an individual think you are just going to work and coming home, you see and think you're just drinking beer and looking at the football game. But frankly, if you look at the totality of the way the economic and political system operates, you're a part of a total system, and what you do is integrated in a system that is designed to act in the world. Now, we as African people then must lose our unconsciousness in this system. We must become conscious of ourselves as workers, as professionals, as this and that, and whatever we are, and be aware of how what we do is integrated and related to the whole of African people and to African ends and purposes. So it is not enough just to gain skills or just to gain knowledge. You must ask skills for what, knowledge for what, and in what way does my skill and my knowledge contribute to the advancement of African people as a whole? In what way can these skills be institutionalized and be built into the culture such that our culture expresses itself as power.